Hi, I'm George Crump, Chief Marketing Officer with Store One. Today we're gonna to talk about standby storage. Standby storage is something that uh, we feel is more necessary than ever. Primarily motivated as a response to ransomware, but also for more common things like storage controller failures, uh, poor software updates, things like that. Anything that's gonna take down your production storage environment and cause you to have an outage at the application layer. So, it, but let's talk about the ransomware use case because it's helpful here. The, if you look at what's going on today in, in ransomware, right, they're gonna, the malware or bad actors are gonna try to attack your uh, application environment and encrypt it. But of course, hopefully anyways, you're doing good backups and you're sending backup data, you're sending that data to your backup software, which is then redirecting it to a backup storage device. If that backup storage device happens to be store one's uh, S1 backup, we uh, help this further by having both a flash and hard drive tier, and that means that you now can write very, very quickly uh, to this upper tier, which means you can get more backups done more often. So that means you can reduce your uh, recovery point objective or RPO. Then as these backups age, we can move them down to this hard drive tier. We use uh, high density drives, provide very fast RAID rebuilds and are able to significantly lower costs as, as a result of doing that. Now the important aspect here is both of these tiers are uh, the data is stored in a mutable state so that if the the malware or the ransomware attacks the backup storage device specifically, we're able to recover and provide a nice clean uh, backup repository for you. Now, the, the problem though is as the ransomware starts to attack, what happens is it's gonna attack these servers over here and it's going to try to encrypt and probably successfully encrypt the data there. And so over here, we've got storage that is now suspect that we really can't count on. And so that really becomes a challenge as you go to recover. You've got the data here, we've stored it immutably, but if we go to recover it over there, we're not sure the state of that. You just can't recover over everything because the, the malware will, will still exist. So what you really need is time. You need time to inspect these volumes and make sure that you've been able to remove all the trigger files that, that caused the encryption process in the first place. So how do you get time? Well, one way to get time is to pay the ransom and hope that you're dealing with an honorable bad actor, uh, which seems like a bad idea, uh, and un unencrypt the data and go from there. Of course, there's obviously a, an expense exposed there as well. However, if it's gonna take you forever to recover, a lot of people determine, hey, this is probably the way I've gotta go. What we think is a better idea is to have this concept of standby storage. And what standby storage allows us to do is leverage this flash tier as a recovery point. Now you can use your backup software's instant recovery capabilities, or you could just restore essentially directly from the flash tier to essentially what would be native volumes now. Um, once you've done that, you can then attach these uh, volumes right back out to production, the production storage network Let's just say in this case, it's a SAN and you can attach directly uh, to these different things. Now, in a NAS use case, you probably uh, wouldn't use the NAS at all. Uh, so we need to also be able to support multiple protocols, which uh, Store One does. So for example, we can deliver SMB and NFS traffic uh, natively. Uh, this could be, as you might guess, fiber channel. We can also do iSCSI. Uh, NVMe over fabric, uh, and even S3 object store. So whatever protocol you need to service your production environment, we're able to deliver through this. And what we're giving you is the benefit of time. Now we've got you back in production. You can go do your forensic work in the uh, original production environment. You're covered with true high availability here. So even if there's a, if you're having a really bad day, not only do you get attacked by ransomware, but then you have a failure of one of the servers, that makes up our environment. We have a second server there ready to go. It's active, active environment, but it'll pick up for the failed node and you'd still be in operation. Also, 
we continue to store this data in an immutable state. So even though it's active and servicing production, we continue to make uh, our immutable snapshots of that. And that way, if you don't get that malware eradicated and somehow it gets into this system, you're 30 seconds away from recovery. Uh, so we have, we're taking snapshots every 30 seconds. If there's a failure, we just roll back that 30 second snapshot. You've virtually lost virtually no data. So it's a nice, clean, uh, sterile environment that you can recover from. It gives you production class performance, production class availability, and really allows you to get back up and running while you do the proper forensic work uh, on the original production storage. So that's standby storage. If you have any more questions, please go to store1.com for more details.